but something I learned in eight years of marriage is it takes a lot of love to fight someone. So going back to Dame and Adonis, either one of them could have just said, hey, you know what? Like, like Dame could have said, I got the title. Whatever you say, it doesn't really matter. Adonis could have said, hey, I'm already successful. I got my family. Forget you, man. I'm going about my life. But they had this, like I said, this love and this care for each other up to the point where they they wanted to fight it out. They wanted to get to a conclusion. And that takes a lot of love to want to get to a conclusion with someone. It's only one way we can start this video. Sorry, I'm sorry. I had to get that out my system real quick. So, so far, I saw this movie twice. And the first time I saw it, I went in expecting like another extension of the Rocky franchise. The second time I watched it, I watched it as its own product. So, this intro is for you Rocky fans and for you guys trying to decide if you want to go spend your money and watch Creed 3 or not. This is not like the other Creed's. Of course, Creed 1 and Creed 2 had Rocky in it, and then Sylvester Stallone, for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into that, but for whatever reason, he decided he's not going to be a part like acting in Creed 3. He's part of the production team, but he's not an uh, uh, actor. We all know the Rocky franchise was Sylvester Stallone's baby. He wrote all six, he directed four. So this is his baby. This is something that means a lot to him. When you go over to the Creed side, Creed, like, if we've been honest, Creed 1 and Creed 2 is more like Rocky 7 and Rocky 8. Because we couldn't really separate Adonis from Rocky, they were together in Creed 1 and Creed 2. Now Creed 3, moving on to Creed 3, this is Michael B. Jordan's baby. Meaning he directed this, he put his heart and soul into this, and I can feel it, I can feel it. Watching the second time, y'all, it's a lot that we missed. It's a lot I feel like went over our heads. But again, you Rocky fans and you people trying to decide if you wanna watch it, just keep that in mind. Please keep that in mind. It may take watching it twice, or you can just watch it once, but you have to keep in mind, this is not a part of Rocky. To me, this feels like Creed 1, meaning it's not a Rocky spinoff, it's just Creed. <sighs> All right, now we got that out the way, man. So, on the surface, we're going to take a deep dive, like, below the surface. I feel like a lot of people may just be talking about the surface. On the surface, you know, of course, we got a good guy, a villain that get out of jail and try to take everything the good guy has. There's two things that we're going to discuss. One is survivor's guilt, and the second is the most important because it's the meat of the movie once you, you get into it. It's the fact that we don't really get stories about how black men actually live their lives when they spend most of their, their childhood or teenage years most of their adulthood in prison and they get out into the real world and they it's almost as if they're thrown into the jungle so they got to get these animalistic behaviors just to kind of survive and make a living so if you got to this point in the video of course it's going to be spoilers i got in, in the title but i got to make sure i said just in case someone misses the title we get a little flashback and throughout the movies we get the flashback in different parts but if you put it all together adonis attack someone from his past and this causes some of the guy that that Adonis was beating some of his boys to jump in and actually jump Adonis now the only thing Damien Damien didn't have a gun we saw that the only thing that he had it in his mind to do to save his his so-called brother at this time is to pull the gun out not even shoot anybody keep that in mind he didn't even shoot anybody he just showed the gun and said you know what it is and then they scattered the police came the only thing Adonis knew what to do as a teenage boy is to run away. So he ran away. And that leads Dame, the 18 year old Dame, y'all, 18 year old Damien, to take the blame for everything. So they didn't really go into detail, but they left us to assume that he took the blame for beating a guy and, of course, for having a gun on, on, on sight. So he went to jail as an 18 year old. He didn't come out till he was nearly 40 years old so keep that in mind he 
he missed all of his 20s. He missed most of his 30s. He didn't come out until like he was like 38 or 39. A lot of times when brothers come home from jails in the inner cities, it be this entitlement. It be this y'all left me. It be that whole mindset of y'all left me. Y'all abandoned me. But you don't want to be accountable for them, so you got to blame other people because it's always easier to say you yep. over me. Yep. I won't get too much into it because I'm not from that life. I don't have any experience with it. But if you just sit and think about it for a little bit, it's like, why did he deserve to be in jail for 20 years? He didn't kill anybody. Of course, he got to blame for beating someone, but it was like a grown, looked like a 40-year-old man with an 18-year-old boy. And then it was like a group of other men there that was with the, the 40 year old man. So I don't see how that could equal almost 20 years in jail. But jumping forward, he meets Adonis, they chop it up and everything. He, he agrees to let Dame train or be a spar partner at his gym. And Dame let his, his attentions be known from the beginning. And Adonis shot it down. Adonis told Dame, what you're asking for is impossible. So of course, that's where we see this type of hill turn. At first, like watching it the first time, I thought, oh, he got out of jail and then he just hated the dentist. So he wanted to kind of get even with him from the jump. That doesn't seem like that's the case at all. It seems like at the point where he told him, what you're asking for is impossible, I can't do it. Up to that point, Dane kept telling the dentist, I don't have time, my time is ticking. I'm like, he's nearly 40 years old, he's already old. He's just trying to do the best he can with the only thing that he knows how to do, which was fight. So of course, if you back a cat into a corner where he has no other choice, he's going to claw and stretch his way out until he finds a safe place. And that brings us to his, his debut fight, his debut professional fight, where he just basically, he, like of course he haven't trained or been in a fight in 20 years. So he couldn't really beat a professional boxer fairly. So he had to, like I said, claw and stretch his way out and cheat, elbow, kicks, all that until he got what he wanted. Now, this brings me to like the most impactful scene like this far, this far in the movie. I was talking to my wife about it. She was in the mind state that I was, I was in when I first watched the movie. I watched it with her the first time, I watched it the second time by myself, so I had a better understanding. So she was saying, well, he beat the guy so bad he nearly died. And I was telling her, no, that's just kind of like a little paprika they put on that scene just to kind of make Dane seem more of a villain. Like he couldn't just knock out the guy and then the guy just get back up, you know, kind of just wobble, you know, wobble, wobble his way back to his locker room. It had to be the most dramatic scene so they had to make it look bloody. They had to, you know, make the little girl go away. So Dane seems like a, a, a big villain. But if you keep in mind everything I just said, he had to claw and stretch his way out. Of course, you can't just, you know, get a job, straight, a good job straight out of prison. So the only thing he knew what to do was box. So he said, okay, this is my only opportunity. So I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to make it. And he did just that. And I love John Damaris. I think I always say this when it comes to John Damaris. I'm a fan of his, by the way. But I, I love his facial expression because it was like pure bliss. When I first watched it, I thought it was kind of comical because the way he was moving. But it was like pure bliss. He couldn't like believe he just reached his goal that, that quick. Even though he did it in a dirty way to him. To him as a character, to him as Damien, he's saying to himself, I did it. He kept like that little booklet he had, y'all. The, the booklet was a list of goals that he wanted to achieve. So he achieved his, his highest goal possible that you can think of. So he was just in bliss in that moment. And then he turns to, he turns to Adonis like, bro, like, what's up, bro? What's up? Holding the titles, expecting Adonis. I mean, I know... Adonis had to deal with his 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 client, whatever you want to call him. So he wasn't really on the, like it wasn't the best time to talk to him. But still, I think Dame in that moment at least wanted like a nod, like something to say you did it. But hey, I gotta go take care of this guy. You you beat him pretty bad. Like you you did it. You played dirty. You played dirty. But saying it out loud, I guess the way Dame was backed in the corner, I guess he. He just did the exact same thing to Adonis. So he wanted the nod of approval, but he got a nod of dis 
approval, letting them know that this wasn't the way to, to go about it. And this is what causes the main tension in the movie because you got two sides that that's trying to do the best they can with the best they have. But now the C has split. There's no way for them to actually communicate with each other and, and talk it out. So putting a pause on that before we talk about the actual ending. So when I first watched the movie, I was thinking about the side characters, the mother, the daughter, and the wife. So the daughter, I'm going to save her for the last. We're going to talk about her at the end of the video because I think I have a pretty on-spot prediction on, on the, the direction they're going to take with the daughter. Now the mother, it seems like she didn't have much to do with the movie, but everything I'm saying besides this is pretty much, I feel like it's pretty much spot on with the direction that the crew wanted to take with the movie. But this is kind of like a theory that I had. So on her deathbed, she was talking to a dentist. Of course, she wasn't in her right mind fully at the time. So she was talking to a dentist as if he was Apollo Creed. And what she said was, you, I think something like along the lines of you were hard headed, you, you know, you were angry, you were upset, you just wanted to, to knock everybody out. But there's another way to go about it. And then it looked like she kind of came to herself and she she repeated, there's another way. And then she lost herself again and started talking to, to Adonis like he was Apollo. For us as the viewers, she supported the whole Dame is the worst villain ever by showing Adonis the pictures that confirmed that Dame kind of set everything up to get this position. So just how we watched the movie the first time and saw Dame as this thug, this bad guy, she seemed to think the same way. Now, again, like I said, this is kind of like a, a far off theory that I have myself. I just wanted to put it out there. When she was talking to Adonis as if he was Apollo, he wanted to knock everybody out, but there's another way to go about it. There's another way. So when she said there's another way the second time to me, I think that was her coming back to herself, coming back to reality and thinking about the relationship with Dame and Adonis and seeing Dame as Apollo. So to me, I think she came to herself she was like in a near-death moment so she saw everything clearly like she almost could predict the future that's how, how clearly she saw everything so in that moment when she repeated to herself there's another way to me it was like her seeing adonis go the successful route go the right route and she saw dame similar to apollo being all angry and want to knock everybody out and then in that split moment it clicked to her that okay Adonis has to show Dame the way. I was wrong about him. That may be a stretch, but like I said, it's open-ended, so we can do whatever you like. That's like, this movie is, uh, is is art, so you can do, think of any theories you like to when it comes to the open-ended stuff. And to support my theory, at the end, he was in the ring, he kind of looked up, and then he walked off. To me, that could have may could have been a nod to his mom, like, you, you knew, didn't you? So next we got Bianca Creed, the wife. Now, I didn't understand her part at all this, the first time around, but the second time around I was like, oh crap, I, I see it clearly. So if you think about it, there's a lot of interactions with, with, with Dame and, and Bianca. At first you, you don't really know what to think about it. Like, is he flirting with her? Like, why is he being so nice and like being an open book with Bianca? Like, long story short, they kind of mirror each other in a way. So Adonis, he approached her and kind of just said, you're good at this. You're good at the emotional stuff and like expressing your feelings and stuff like that. And she basically told him, she said, I still have a lot to learn. And my dreams didn't turn out the way I imagined it, it would. And it still hurts me. Now think about Bianca and Dame at the listening party. He walked over to her while, while Dennis was doing his thing. And, and he asked her, is it hard to see someone else sing your song? And she kind of just gave him like a, a generic answer but he kind of read through it and let her know like I understand you don't really feel that way and the reason he was saying that because like I said they mirror each other her dreams didn't turn out the way she thought it would his dreams didn't turn out the way he thought it would and they're both fighting to kind of try to find a way to express it Bianca's way to express it was talking to Adonis's mother and she that's why she kind of broke down to him so she said I kind of lost my, my, my partner that I would talk to. Damien on the other side doesn't really have anyone. He has all these 
these new friends and stuff like that, but they're just, they're just, just there for the money. So the only person he really has is the person that turned his back on him in a ring when he was like, bro, what's up, bro? bro and he shook his head in disapproval and turned his back on him so now dame is alone you can go back to the scene where he punched him at the beach and he besides helping him up he said help yourself up for once and you told him now you know how it feels to be alone on the surface this could easily be you know how it feels to be in jail or be alone by yourself you're, you're truly alone now but deep down i think he was trying to say I expected the support from a brother, but instead you treated me like I was a stranger, like I was nobody. So when they looked at the younger version of themselves, that was them kind of reflecting that, okay, this is my brother. This isn't just another opponent. I'm fighting my brother. I think the fact that they're not actual blood brothers, they're adoptive brothers, that's what kind of makes it go over our head. Anybody with siblings can tell you that they're going to fight like cats and dogs, and then the next day, they're going to be laughing together. I knew a girl that was fighting with her brother in the car. He was in the back seat. He had his legs out, out the car. She actually took the door and tried to, like, slam it on his legs and, like, break his legs. And he kind of, like, just pulled his legs back in just enough time. A couple of days after that, they're laughing and giggling together. I'm like, what the crap is happening? Brothers, sisters, siblings, they're going to fight. But in the end, they know it's out of love. I can tell you personally, the only, the closest thing I had to to having siblings is my wife. I know it's weird to say my, my wife is like my sister, but in a way, she's like my sister. She's my best friend. Now, we fight like cats and dogs, but something I learned in eight years of marriage is it takes a lot of love to fight someone. So going back to Dame and Adonis, Either one of them could have just said, hey, you know what, like like Dame could have said, I got the title, whatever you say, it doesn't really matter. Dennis could have said, hey, I'm already successful, I got my family, forget you, man, I'm going about my life. But they had this, like I said, this love and this care for each other up to the point where they, they wanted to fight it out. They wanted to get to a conclusion, and that takes a lot of love to want to get to a conclusion with someone. So now everything is black, all they see is each other. They're fighting, they're yelling at each other, so it's not even a boxing match. It's just them getting their anger out. Now, I can't really put this into words because they didn't say words themselves. This is just something we just have to rewatch like over the years. But that scene, if you keep everything I said in mind, like they're the love for each other. They want to just get to a conclusion. They didn't have a chance to actually talk about it, so they're talking through the fight. I'm not gonna lie, it didn't make me cry, but it made my eyes water seeing the the, 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 the facial expressions of Damien, like seeing how a dentist was just like yelling. I don't know if y'all caught it, but when they did the flashback, just for like a few seconds, when him and Dane was practicing boxing in their bedroom, they had like a, a rolled up bed mattress they was fighting on, and then that's when the guy came and, and did what he did. But in that last fight scene, they gave us a visual of that of Adonis throwing Dame on that same bed and beating on him. So it's like letting us know he's he's fighting his past. He's fighting this this idea that he ran away. He doesn't want to be a coward. He's, he's trying to prove something to Damien that he's not a coward. He even told him, like, you thought it was going to be easy. So he's telling him, like, I'm not a coward. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not that little boy anymore. And then if you flip it, on Damien's side, he's playing the big brother in the fight and this is this is the, the the most touching part of the fight to me so when he finally did hit that you know that that the infamous punch the gut punch and knocked him out he wanted him to get up he told him he's like get up but then it's like get up get up get up and when he finally did get up he was like yeah yeah so that's nothing but big bro energy right there even at the end of the fight when he lost to me adonis didn't really you could it was hard to read his face you can tell if he was smirking or not but damien for sure had like a smirk on his face like yeah you you gained my respect just now and then that brings us to the final scene which was more important than the fight itself adonis just apologized to his big bro let him know i'm sorry for not reaching out so that's what i was talking about in the beginning that survivor's guilt he he wanted to forget his past even though he was a, 
already successful and everything he wanted to forget it mainly because it it hurt him to the core to know that i ran away when you needed me the most so this caused me to kind of feel guilty for my success and and i had to get it out tonight in this fight i had to prove to you that i'm not a coward dame said it was okay we're just kids and it's not on you it's not on you and sudden that touched me the most in this scene Adonis turned around and said, Dame, it's, it's not on you either. And again, like I said in the beginning of this video, I really feel like he shouldn't have spent all those years in prison. And I feel like that was kind of like a nod to that by him saying this, that it wasn't on you. It's just how the system is for black men. But once you make just one singular mistake in your life, that's it. Close the door on them, your life is over. And it ends with the handshake and Adonis let him know if you need me, you know where to find me. So, again, they left this. It was more of an open ending, but to me, that lets us know that Dame, he accomplished everything he, he set out to accomplish. So, he's already successful. He was champ. He has a following. You saw, like, in the locker room, even though he lost, his following was still calling him champ. And we saw in one little scene, it looked like he, he had his own gym at one point where they kind of celebrated him. Even though he wasn't fighting or sparring, him just walking in is the woof, 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 woof. Like everybody was like celebrating him as a champion. So to me, the ending was just trying to say that Dame, he got what he came for. He's successful now, or he has enough success to, to live a comfortable life. He doesn't have to worry about like, you know, being in the gutter again. And Adonis gave him the cosign to let us know if you do need help, if you do feel yourself going down that path again, you know where to find me. Now, this brings us to the daughter. The daughter, to me, it was simple. They're, they're setting up for future movies. Michael B. Jordan already confirmed that it, it will be a Creed 4, and I really feel like he's not gonna be a fighter in Creed 4. I feel like it's gonna be more about the daughter. If you didn't know, the daughter, the deaf daughter is actually a deaf person, so I feel like that'll be something awesome to see, like a deaf, black girl <laughs> being a, a major star in the film. That's something I, I'll, I'll go out to see. I feel like for the Rocky fans that watch this, they did try to give us some nods. If you think back to Rocky, which one was it? Rocky Five. When he was retired, he was over the gym. He didn't really fight, but like he had a, a protege that kind of challenged him to a fight that, a protege that had a heel turn that challenged him to a fight that got him back to fight. Yeah, I remember he had the promoter that tried to get Rocky back in the ring, but Rocky was like, nah, outside of my ring, they had the street fight. Now, I feel like Rocky V is very similar to this. Not saying like they took Rocky V and made Creed three, but I'm saying it was like a nod to the Rocky fans that, hey, you're getting a taste of Rocky. And not only that, if you think back to the last Rocky, Rocky Bad Boy, or, or Rocky VI, if you want to call it that, think back to the montage in Creed three. All of a sudden, they tried to make him seem older. They wanted you to realize that he hasn't had a fight in, in so many years, that he had injuries in his hands and stuff like that. To me, this was very similar to Rocky Balboa, the movie, where Rocky was on like his combat tour. He was on his official last fight. So again, I feel like that's another nod to Rocky fans that they, they threw in there. And it also supports my idea that he won't be fighting again in the next Creed 4. And then he said it may, he said there's talks of spinoff. So of course he won't be fighting in the spinoff, but I really feel like he's not gonna be a active boxer in Creed 4. He's just gonna be in his daughter's corner. When I say masterpiece, don't think perfect. I'm not saying this movie is perfection. I'm saying it's a work of art. There's so many different ways to see it. There's so many different takeaways you can take away from it. Everything flows together, the characters, everything they did, it, it helped the story of Damien being this hurt person that just got released out of jail. It took some small parts of the Rocky story and made it into its, its, its own world. To me, that's art, to take something and make it your own. This is Michael B. Jordan's baby, this isn't Sylvester Stallone's baby, to me, this is the first official creed, y'all, but that's all I gotta say. That's all I got to say. I will be watching this again. I will be looking forward to Creed 4 and whatever else they do.